Hey everyone, welcome back. It's a week late, but we are here with our AEW Double or Nothing review. Once again, with me is Campo Reviews, the man who reviews movies, TV shows, and wrestling. Um, he's fear we're fearing the fin with his hat today. Um, and I see he's got a turtles hat on uh, a shirt on today. So rock the ninja turtles. Game's leaving game pass next week. Um good thing we so, beat it. Yes, the first night. Go watch Putty's channel for that. But enough plugs for somebody else. We are here to review AEW's Double or Nothing. Campo, you said you kind of missed the pre-show. You didn't really It just didn't work properly. Okay. So the it wasn't much of a match. It was the Hardys, Jeff and Matt and Hook with Isaiah Cassidy. Where's the other guy from Private Party? Is he hurt? Still injured. Yeah. Okay. Against the All Ego Ethan Page and the Guns. Um Jeff was weird. Hook was good. Matt is bad. It's so, basically all I got to say. I have, a, I have something. I, I know this is a weird thing. Okay, so Jeff is clean. Um, Supposedly. But I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, or maybe it's just because we've never seen sober Jeff ever. Ever, mm-hmm. ever, not ever. Um, Because allegedly he's been drunk or high since the very first day we've ever seen him on WWE. Yep. Um, but he seems more fucked up now that he's sober yeah like <laughs> yeah. it's really awkward it is it was it was weird to watch he he looks like he's not there which what was the show we were watching i forgot which pay-per-view it was but it was the one where we took off his boot it was uh double All or out? nothing last year i think was it double or nothing and he was just like completely like he wasn't able to climb the ropes and he wasn't yeah, able I, to... it was either double or nothing or all out the last one yeah but it was yeah and jeff was a bit weird um yeah, and I put why is the oldest guy in the in the in the match in the ring the longest? Yeah, I and his legs don't work. Yeah, clearly. Matt Hardy does not work at all. Like, like I get it for the nostalgia factor. I mean, and there was also a stipulation on this match that um, if the Hardys won, Matt would take over the ownership of Ethan Page's contract from uh, Hathaway. There is it. Is he still with Hathaway? Yeah. 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 Well, now, but, uh, I don't know. It's it's so messed up because now uh, what's his name is on uh, Ring of Honor yeah. as an authority figure. Yep. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's weird. But, uh, I mean, let's hope they do something finally with Ethan Page. He's been there so Put long. Put him in the freaking – this is all I want, okay? And I know this is – we're getting too deep, and this is the beginning. We didn't even start talking right? about the pay-per-view. Put the guns – and Ethan Page in Bullet Club Gold and make them become a force. Not like what you tried to do with the firm. Make them become like how Bullet Club is becoming in New Japan, which we'll talk about in that review. That'll be out on Thursday, so make sure you go watch so, that. But like where they're just dominating and killing everybody. But they're if you just... want to see a sp- slight spoiler, go to my Instagram and there's a slight spoiler yeah. of what Bullet Club. But it's just the way that it should be. Right, they yeah. shouldn't be stuck in them. If they're going to be stuck in the mid card, have them literally just spend every week beating up random wrestlers. Like that's yeah. how it should be. Yeah, I think so. It just make them a dominant force in the mid card, even if they're not going to yeah. at least and beat Ethan everybody. Page is, is perfect for that. He's a heel and he can yeah. talk. And the guns are just exactly what you want, like little dipshits in your yeah, little thing. lackeys for him. Yeah. yeah, and that you know, and they're like on the rise still. So I don't know. Yeah, digress. So. With that, that's the end of the pre-show. And this match was 15 minutes long. That was oh, you didn't tell pre- you didn't tell them who won. Oh, the Hardys won. Uh uh, what's his name? Uh got the win over uh over Paige. But that's it. Um, yeah, with that, that's the end of the pre-show. We go into the main card proper. It starts off by uh 21 blackjack battle royal for the uh, AEW international championship. I thought they were going to do like they did the last time. You know how they do the spades and the clubs and the then the Joker card and all that. They did it. It was just everybody in the ring at once. So uh, it was apparently, kind of a mess. Uh, okay, so uh, I gotta I gotta hear and there for this. Well, okay. first of all, apparently Tony Khan booked this entire match on his own, which is Clearly. like that's not bad. I mean, yeah. Okay, so I have good and bad. Like I said, the good is this match ended up being really good for what a battle royal can be yeah however in the early half of it it was very messy and there was it it went way too long this match was like 20 minutes yeah i left 
Okay. I, I was I watched half of it, left, made a sandwich, talked to a bunch of people, got a drink, went to the bathroom, came back, and the match was still going. Yeah. I was gone for like ten over ten minutes. But I mean it did it once the match started, like once the, the obviously junk I rewound people, it for yeah. anyone out there, but but once the junk people were I call them junk people because they're used they're there solely to get eliminated and to add bodies, but once they were eliminated, I noticed they were pairing off a lot and creating a lot of feuds with this. Like yeah, we're getting a smart, swerve right? feud. We're getting a swerve feud with Orange for sure. We're getting we're getting a, a Bullet Club Gold feud with the FTR. with FTR FTR and uh, what's their name Penta and Ray. Yeah, Lucha so Brothers. This, but see what I'm saying. So and the Ricky Starks thing is still going. So that's five mm-hmm. people. So, so three more people are getting introduced to Bullet Club Gold, and yes. I think they just need that firm storyline to wrap up. To, uh, yeah. because the guns already have beef with FTR so yeah. that's a that's a thing and they kind of teased they were already with BC Gold already too so yeah so i mean it was okay i mean i'm tired of orange cassidy though i think we need to take the belt off okay of him. not okay i want to stress this he's amazing and he's great I'm, I'm not sick of him as a wrestler but i'm tired of every single time dynamite starts his stupid theme i mean i love that song but it's great it's song. Just like every single time dynamite starts i have to watch an orange cassidy match where we know he's gonna win like i'm just so bored of it that and the fact that it's been three months how is his hand not healed yet yeah and how do they keep putting him through these matches using the hand as a crutch, but then he still doesn't lose? I guess the overcoming adversity storyline. Listen, in less than a year, he's fought and defended his title more times than Roman Reigns has in like four years. Yes. And he's had the belt 10% of what Roman Reigns has had. Him. Yeah. So, which, you know, he has a new belt now. Yes. He, he did get the third belt. Yeah. It's ugly. <laughs> tune in probably next week or the week after we'll have our state and we'll talk about it but um orange cassidy goes over i think he uh eliminated swerve he was the uh, swerve was the last guy out so this is going to set up maybe a swerve and uh orange feud yeah i think so okay maybe, I, maybe. Think every, I think everyone's tired of the keith lee thing yeah you know it's uh he stopped using his just for men so yeah i mean okay so he looks I, like santa now he came back Mm-hmm. And immediately I was like, okay, we're going to have fun. He did the thing with Dustin and like, I was like, I like this. Yeah. And then it went back to like every Keith Lee match is the same match. Yeah. It's, he's another one. He's good. He's a talented wrestler. He's just not in the right feud. So we'll get to this about this event. So, but Keith Lee in general was super, super hot. Like he was, everyone was cheering for him constantly. He does mm-hmm. not have that anymore. That is gone. Yeah. Like once in a while they get that chant going, but he's no longer the wrestler where everyone had his back. The fans, like nobody really cares what Keith Lee's doing anymore. He's been gone away too long and his feuds are lackluster. Yeah. And what's the next match? Um, Adam Cole against Chris Jericho. Okay. Well, we'll get to the next thing that I was going to say, because I thought it was something else. Um, Yeah. So Orange Cassidy wins, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it was a good for a battle royal. Uh, it was yeah. a little bit too long. Yeah, I agree. Um, if it were like a one entrance at a time as a Royal Rumble, then maybe. But if everybody's in there, it shouldn't go more than 15 minutes. And how long was it? Do you have the time? 22 and a half minutes. Yeah, I knew it was past 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, next, we have Adam Cole uh, with Roderick Strong against Chris Jericho and the JAS all at ringside with him. Um, it was an oh, unsanctioned match. about someone. Sabu. You, did you say Sabu? No, well, Sabu, I was going to say, he was the special guest referee. Uh, he wasn't okay. technically part of the group. Yeah, he was there to do two spots. Throw a chair and then jump yeah. through a table. Fantastic. Lovely. And then yeah. what's-her-name came out anyway to finish the match. It's The buffoonery of this match is, like, I don't know. The buffoonery is unsanctioned. Yeah. This, this match was, for Chris Jericho versus Adam Cole, this is one of the worst matches I've ever seen. I would have rather watched a just a straight up wrestling match, a submission match. A Why technical... didn't you make another second anarchy in the arena match and just let this be it? Because yeah. what was the point of this? Yeah, there was no point. Oh, it's one on one. It ended up being a group match for the first five minutes, and then yeah. everyone just vanished off the screen. Yeah. Uh, d- d- there was a part, though, uh, where uh, Britt comes out, say, uh, puts Jericho in the j- lockjaw. 
whippity do right um, um yeah like you said sabu goes through a chair go goes through a table throws a chair um yeah it off- started off i got really into it yeah. um when they all came out fighting i'm like well this is gonna be fun with sabu and then after his his very he threw a chair and it looked good the way they came out his next yeah, move i just want you to know this if nobody saw this he picks up a chair, looks to his left, sees Roderick Strong picking up a chair, doesn't realize who it is, and throws the chair at Roderick Strong. So it happens. You can watch that as many times yes. as you want. He throws the chair right at Roderick Strong, and it hits him in the hands, and he he looks up like, oh, fuck, I just hurt my hands. Um, By the way, Roderick Strong versus Chris Jericho was 10 times better than this match. Yes, it was. But, uh, I mean, this and this one went long, too. This one went 17 minutes. I, and it's weird. I hesitate to call this bad because I just it's the the people involved. It makes me feel yeah. ugly doing if it. But this, this were, was a if legit this were bad match. Straight up, if this were a straight up fifteen minute wrestling match, throw in a little buffoonery here and there, like a little Jake Hagar interference or a little you know Angelo Parker interference, whatever. That's fine. But when but, you start the match with the interference, it was like. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. What happens now? And then they you all shoot just your decided load to go before, home before anything. You know what I mean? Like, and and there was so much WWE style mm-hmm. nonsense here, where like, oh, there's such a conveniently placed ex- extinguisher right in hands reach yeah. of him, of him, and then yeah. like that that kind of stuff kept happening. And it's funny because I saw a lot of people online after I thought the same thing, and a lot of people, I mean, I thought it, and then when I saw people feel the same way, I was like. Oh, this is for real. It's like, yeah, you weren't the only one that thought that. It's like, so WWE is like where you everything is just convenient. The weapons yeah. are just all convenient. And the thing is, too, Adam Cole was positioned for such a great baby face run. I think this kind of stops his momentum. Yeah. And like I said, okay, well, he's not going to lose it. Um, it's, it's weird. Like, the, the kind of and I mean he and not in the sense of like they're a heel he like the quality of what you're getting from the fans so yeah. number one just like I need to tack this on now the crowd was dead. Dead. the crowd was absolutely dead it's the least amount of seats they've ever sold for a double or, for, or yeah double or nothing in mm-hmm. Vegas um we spent the entire week prior to this getting ring of honor everything filmed there and every single one of those shows though the crowd was absolutely dead. Yeah. The dynamite official showing, attendance. The official attendance was only nine thousand people. Yeah, and and apparently, from what I heard from the what culture guys who were at the dynamite and all those tapings, there the crowd was basically empty. I mean, the stadium was basically empty. They put yeah. everybody just into the corner and the one side, and the whole rest of the arena was completely empty. Um, I understand this is a gimmick pay per view, and you like the idea of it being gambling based and in Vegas. Yeah. But I think AEW, if you hear this, you need to question the fact if you should ever go back to Vegas. You know what? Do Atlantic City next. There's a casino in Atlantic City. Yeah. Go anywhere, man. Go anywhere. Vegas yeah. clearly is not a place where people want to watch wrestling and just stop doing it because it was the next dynamite, which was mm-hmm. last week in then. What's in San Diego? It was in San okay. Diego, and the crowd was absolutely raucous. The, right. the place was shaking. But the thing is, what's funny is when ROH or when Impact go to Sam's Town in Vegas, the crowd is great. But I guess it's because it's a smaller place where people yeah, can true. fill it, right? And that I don't know. This just wasn't it, Chief. We need to yeah. move on from this. This but... was not, yeah. But let's move on from this match. Uh, Jericho loses. Uh, Adam Cole goes over. Um, by ref stoppage, actually. The so this feud is continuing. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy to say Jericho versus AJ uh, AJ Cole yeah. versus Adam Cole, Adam Cole is a bad match. Is is going to be a a feud I don't want to see. Yeah, unless they have a really fantastic actual wrestling match. Yeah, I guess they need to redeem themselves. So, um, we'll move on from this. We're spending too much time on these. Um, next we have the tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Um, and again, another special special guest. There were so many gimmicks in this show. Mark Briscoe was the special guest referee against FDR uh, and against uh, Jarrett and Jay Lethal. And again, shenanigans, whatever you want to call it, like buffoonery, as you called it. Like it was insane. I'm sanctioned buffoonery. Yes. Um, this listen, nobody. And this is this pains me. This even more than what we just talked about. Nobody gives a shit about FTR anymore. No. They get no pop, and, and and this is not just the Vegas thing. For since they've come back, they've got no pop at yeah. all. 
even what the day when they won the the title, when they came yeah. out, there was no pop. There, I mean, when they won, there was a pop, but when they came out, the crowd was freaking silent. I think they're gonna. It's gonna be a huge pop when they're here. Yeah, I think so too. But I just think we let their heat die off. There, when yeah. you're when you have that much momentum, you don't take them off TV for two months, three months. Yeah, it's like, and Keith Lee was the same thing, right? I maybe they're hurt, but it, it's like I don't know. Yeah, but um, yeah. Again, buffoonery. Uh, Karen Jarrett hits the ref in the head with the guitar and. And they have heat. The, the crowd yeah. hates them. Yeah, they do. Like, and it's just like, it's it's getting a little out of hand with Sanjay Dutt and Satnam, and now Karen's involved in this too. And it's like, I don't mind it because I think they do a really good job. I think the addition of Karen was stupid because now mm-hmm. we're forced to watch bad women's matches because mm-hmm. that's all that's going to come out of this. Well, I mean, as long as Karen is not involved in any of the AEW women's booking, we're okay. Well, all we know is that on Wednesday, I have to watch Aubrey wrestle Karen Jarrett. Oh, dear So, God. Yeah. We don't have to watch it, but we watch I it mean. for you, so you don't have to. But uh, FTR retains. Um, FTR, but the thing is, they're still one of the best tag teams out there. They are so good. Yeah, they are. And it's clearly a setup for what's coming later, which we'll talk about in another review. Yes. Um, and they may three belt them again. I hope not. It's not, they don't need it. No. Um, so next we, uh, FTR goes over, they retain another 20 minute match. It was super long. Um, and we're not even halfway through. And I think the show is already two hours in, right? Yeah. Um, next we got Wardlow defending the AEW eight, uh, TNT championship against Christian cage. Another unnecessary gimmick match. Every mm-hmm. gimmick for this whole thing was unnecessary. And this was a ladder match. None of it was to the benefit of the people in the match. Yeah. Oh, Christian's in this match. Let's make it a ladder match. Wardlow did use the ladders quite well. I was very yeah. surprised. He did... was pretty athletic in this match. I, I made a note. Like yeah. he was getting some good moves in. Until the dumb WWE booking of Luchasaurus and Arn Anderson, I was perfectly oh, fine God, with yes. this match. Yeah, with the the bloody condom on his finger. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> that you could clearly see. Like this is a thing too. We're, after watching New Japan and like all that stuff, when you see some of the awkward camera angles that they use here, yeah, like WWE messes up a little bit on NXT, but like on the main pay per views, they're pretty good with it. And like AEW is just like we're always zoomed in on the worst possible thing. Yeah, always on the wrong angle. Always on the yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um. Wardlow goes over. Um, he retains. We kind of knew that was coming. This match was fine. It was fine, but it was on un- the gimmick match, like you said. Oh, it's Christian. Let's put it in a ladder match. That was unnecessary. unnecessary. Every Christian match so far that I've seen has been a gimmick match. He had the gimmick match with Jungle Boy in the buried hey, he alive. He was really good. He was. Really he was good. though. Like I mean, at least Christian could still go, and it made Wardlow look good too. And that's really what you want. Yeah. So I will that, sanction this buffoonery. Yes, you will sanction this buffoonery. Um, next we got uh, Tony Storm with the other outcasts against Jamie Hader for the AEW Women's World Championship. Now, going into this match, we already knew Jamie Hader was injured and they were going to be taking her off TV. Yeah, and I guess they didn't want to pull another Thunder Rosa and be like, oh, I'm going to vacate the title. Yeah. Um, They've done too much vacating since I've started watching wrestling. Mm-hmm. So clearly this was so, that. And you know, so props... I like that. So I like the fact that they did that beat down angle right before the match. Yeah. And shout out to Jamie Hader for having such a terrible injury and actually being wrestling. willing to take part in this. Yeah. What is the injury exactly? Do you some know? kind of shoulder arm okay. neck thing thing. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. And, and she even got a few kickouts and some near falls herself. So. Yeah, but in the end, um, this was a squash match. It was three minutes, and Tony Storm goes over. And you know what? Okay, I don't care how anybody feels. Um, Tony Storm is great, and Tony Storm and should have never lost it to begin with. I I agree. Not when she did, because she was so hot at that point. But I can't yeah. lie. Jamie Hader has been the best world champion for the female division they've ever had. Yeah, I mean, what did I say? Tony Storm? Did I say Jamie Hader? Jamie, Jamie Hader. Hader. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you did say Hader. Yeah, she's been the she's Since, probably the best wrestler they have in that division. Yeah. And sh- and unfortunately, Sheeta never got the chance to shine as champion during the pandemic. 
But the, Hater has been the best run since Sheeta. I think, you, although you set up right now for a storyline to possibly let Sheeta win. Um, and also, all you did here was re-recognize Tony Storm, and it's okay for her to lose the title right away now, I think. Yeah. So Or have a back and forth somehow. Yeah. Which we glossed over. Um, what's her name? Soraya was involved in the Adam Cole match. Yeah, and that led to a really terrible... Yes, mixed mixed match. tag match. Yes, absolutely, it did. Um, which leads me to believe I think AEW may be getting a mixed tag championship in the works. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to complain. I I think it's because they're introducing the new show. But yeah. if you really, if you really look at it and you break it down, I don't know, remember if we even talked about this. If they do a full brand split, they're in mm. a really, really weird situation in regarding titles. Yes. Uh, because there's two titles worth way more than the rest of the titles, but one of them requires it to be defended on both shows, and the other one, because it's a world championship, also requires it, it requires to, be, it defended to be, defended be defended on both, both shows. shows. Yeah. So it's like okay, so one gets us two two shows get specific low tier titles, and all the other titles just cross. Doesn't yeah. make any sense. But, yeah. But, um. Uh, but. Mm-hmm. I I just got to say, off topic. Having th- thought throughout this whole process that, yes, Soraya was getting slightly better mm-hmm. and uh, Britt Baker was gaining this kind of new move set that was mm-hmm. like really to her benefit, watching them in the doubles match or the, the intergender match. Soraya was, was so never bad. that good. Soraya so the two was... of them, when they were in the ring together, was so awful that like if Chris Jericho wasn't there, that match would have been complete. Yeah. Uh, was zero out of ten. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, let's move on. We are going into a six-man championship match. The trios championship is the House of Black with Julia Hart uh, against the acclaimed of Anthony Bowens, Max Caster, and M- uh, Daddy Ass himself, Mr. Gunn. Yeah, Julia Hart's super hot. Shout out to Julia Hart. Um, also, I'm really enjoying the progress of her as a character and a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though she hasn't been in the ring much, her character development is really... I think this is what they were trying to do with Alexa Bliss. Yeah, and it, it, Alexa Bliss became the main character of that story. That's the problem. Yeah, where um, Hart is not. She's just... an. I don't want to say accessory because that sounds like a bad way to say it, but she's just a part of many. You know what I mean? Yeah, which makes it better. Like, she's doing her own thing as well where she's growing, so that's fine. Um, yeah. I love House of Black. I'm also getting tired of them the same way I got tired. Like, for some reason, Death Triangle was just so good. I never got tired of them as the Where trios. is Pac? I don't know. I, th- I think he's hurt. But, uh, okay, so this was another stipulation match yep. where you had a, a secret team. Why wouldn't you bring out, like, a legitimate secret team? Like, why wouldn't you get a trio from New Japan or anything else? Anybody, yeah. Why? Why? Did, why is it the acclaimed? Why? Well, I mean, there's, yeah. There's no story build up to this at all, and then they turned down all the stipulations of the match. Yeah. What the fuck was the point of it? I don't know. It was what did they call it? The house open house rules or whatever it was called. Yeah, and they're like, oh, we don't care. And, and it's like, what is it? The, the match was fine. Yeah. Arguably one of the better matches on the show. Absolutely, I agree. But it's like at the end of the day, it's just was this any of this necessary? No. No. Like there's no build, like you said, there's no build up to the feud. There was nothing. It's just here's the acclaimed. You like the acclaimed? Yeah, here's that's more. What they did because if you paid attention for the last two weeks, every Dynamite and Rampage, they've been wrestling in trio matches for like the last four mm-hmm. episodes. Yeah. So it was like if you're a, a smart Mark, you knew that something mm-hmm. was coming with this. But realistically, it's like then why smart wouldn't Mark you Sterling. create a storyline? Yeah. Yeah, well, it would have made name, more... his his name is very smart. Yes. I never thought of that. But uh, yeah, so House of Black retains 15 minute match. It wasn't that long. It was a good match. I mean, yeah, was, I always enjoy is... like these three. I always enjoy watching so, what I what I wanted to get off was the fact that Max Castor's rap at the beginning, he made fun of Buddy uh, Murphy there. Oh, yeah. That he said, uh, you know, you're being cuckold by a guy named by a kid named Dominic. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, which is a reference in case people don't know. Uh, Mur- uh, uh, Murphy, uh, Buddy Matthews, whatever you want to call him now, is dating Rhea Ripley from WWE. Yeah. But yeah, but that was pretty funny. Um, House of Black goes over as they should. Who's next? 
See, that's the thing. A lot of these like don't go anywhere. Because there's no attempt to build a story here. It's just, oh, we need yeah. an extra match on this pay-per-view. Yeah. We got to have all the titles. I mean, that's the thing, too. Like, as much as we love titles being defended on shows, and the more titles defended on shows, the better. But if there's no buildup and there's no reason behind it, but it doesn't have the same weight. If it's different, if the match is a five-star certified banger, it's yeah. when it's like a three-star three? enjoyable match, you're like, okay, fantastic, I guess. But like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, next, we have the AEW TBS Championship match of Jade Cargill versus Taya Valkyrie. Best match Jade has ever wrestled by okay. far. And shout out to Taya Valkyrie for completely mm. carrying this yeah. match. She's so good. Um, she loses, which absolutely drove me crazy because if you were going to do it, I wanted this to be it. But then I realized that was just for her to hit 60 and 60. 0. Yeah. Um, so Jade Cargill wins. She goes 60 and 0. Taya, Taya Valkyrie loses all momentum. Now but I don't because she's I, I lost think she's so okay. many matches. I think she's okay. Okay. But uh I, I personally think. Um, so then you know, Mark Sterling comes out and he open challenge, open challenge, out comes Chris Statlander, and Chris Statlander absolutely squashes Jade Cargill, and we have a brand new AEW TBS champion. Okay, well, there's a moment there where Jade makes a small little comeback quickly, mm -hmm. and you're I was like, oh no. They're just going to have yeah. her lose, come back and lose. I mean, she wins the title. Yeah. Smart. Because apparently the plan is to write Jade off TV for the next little while, have her go back to developmental, get more training in, yeah. and then come back as a new character. Like, she'll still be Jade Cargo, but she won't be the baddie or whatever it was. Yeah. She's going to be a new character. So, you know, shout out to her. Um, I, I do think there's a lot of good in her future. Yeah. The, 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 the youth of the women's division in AEW is very strong. Yeah. Like Anna Jay's not far off. J uh, Julia's Julia Hart. not far off, far off. You, you know, got Tony Jade. storm, you got yeah. Jamie hater. Well, Tony like... storm is already good. No, but that's what I'm saying. But you have Tony storm and yeah, Jamie yeah. hater and you have Sheeta and you have like the, the core is there and they're building on it. And impact still has the best women's division, but yeah, we digress. But I digress. Um, so we have a new champ. Um, next we go into the four pillars match, as they called it, um, which was MJF against Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, and Jungle Boy, who goes by Jack Perry now. A fantastic match. Yes. This is this was the match of the night. But to have to sit through three hours or whatever it was of what we got for the yeah. cost of for the fifty dollars I paid mm -hmm. was absolutely sanctioned unsanctioned buffoonery yes but um i mean it was a decent match um mjf plays the heel very very well even though he's not the best performer in the ring uh, he's better than darby allen well yeah but uh if like and these were like in these and it took him four years to get to this point with all four of these guys like at I least Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. MJF is the best character in this yes. group. Uh, Sammy Guevara is by far the best wrestler. Yeah. Jack Perry has more potential, I think, than any of them, but he's just so rough around the edges still, and he can't cut a promo to save his life. Yeah, he needs a little bit more polish, or he needs a mouthpiece or something. Then again, Darby Allen, who's been wrestling longer than any of these guys, still can't cut a promo, and he can only do the exact same moveset that he always does. Yeah. He has he's shown zero growth since I started watching wrestling. Yeah, he's still the same character, the same gimmick, the same moveset, the same... like, And that's even being paired with Sting for two years. And it's Sting went head first through t three tables. Yeah, and also Sting cut one of the better promos we've seen recently when he lit yeah. up MJF. So, um, I mean, it's it's weird. It, but it was a great match. I, yeah. I, I would literally tell you that if you, this is a must watch match. It, it's, yes, it was full of spots, and it was done properly, and it just felt good. There was a good flow to it. I watched it twice actually. Um. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is what it is. I, I enjoyed it. Okay. Um, yeah, and MJF goes over. So through buffoonery. Through buffoonery. So with that, we go into our next match. Um, is the Elite with Adam Page versus the BCC. Um, 
I got angry after about five minutes because the band would not shut the fuck up. But you know what that was, right? A call back to the error of last one where the thing wouldn't stop playing the stop music. Playing the music? They couldn't get them the uh, whatever it is to stop playing John Moxley's intro yeah. for the for half the match. And I remember oh Nick my... was furious. Yeah. And this 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 made me even angrier. But that was the whole point of it. It was it, I think it was meant to make people angry, like a callback to last year where it's like, oh look, this song just keeps going forever. Yeah, I don't like was... the idea of it, but I thought no. it was funny that they they was like they call back to that. Right. Um, and and we had a good payoff because after uh uh, the young bucks super kicked the singer, and they finally get off the stage. Yeah. Um. Eh, 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 fine. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. A good match so far. Okay. I mean, Can somebody just explain to me the exploding shoe? No, you don't need to ex- anything explained from AEW. It's just uh, buffoonery. Um, yes, unsanctioned buffoonery. That should be the title of the show. Yeah, that's in the new wrestling podcast, unsanctioned buffoonery. The it's. There were so many good spots here. Yeah, there, there were was, a lot of good spots. There was a lot of good in ma- in ring stories being told, but it kind of it just wasn't as good as the last time we saw Anarchy, Anarchy. in the arena. Yeah. The last time was the was that the Darby one? It was no, that was JAS versus Tito Ortiz and Eddie Kingston, where he brought out the gas. Oh, it was John Moxley, Brian Danielson, yeah. Eddie Kingston, and uh, Santana and Ortiz. Yeah. So but yeah, that, I mean, that match started off with a jump off the top of the the first deck of seats through seats, a table. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be hard. But yeah, actually, the one with Darby Allen and them was good too. With um, how, that's where Sting went party, through. Yeah, party. and Matt Hardy and them. Are they called but, House uh, Party. What's their name? Private Party. Private Party. Lemon Party. Yeah, it was it was pri- who was it? It was Sting, Sammy Guevara, and Darby Allen. Was it just three on three? I think so. No, it's four on. Four. Yeah, I digress, but uh, we'll we'll remember it eventually. Um, yeah, I mean, Moxley's bleeding within the first. That's his thing now, right? He has to bleed. Yeah, and whatever, it's fine. I, I'm. It's it's a strange situation. Um, like I said. A lot of the in-ring storytelling was good, but it led to like a huge gap. Yeah. It, 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 at the end of the match, because BCC goes over, spoilers, yeah. um, it just left you feeling like, what was the point of this? This was supposed yeah. to be the blow off and we're just getting, now we're going. And it's yeah. like when, okay, so you got to do blood and guts, but you can't do blood and guts before Forbidden Door because if someone gets hurt, then you're yeah. screwed. But now, if you have to wait till after Forbidden Door to do Blood and Guts, you're wasting so much time in between. Yeah, it's too much. It's going to be two months. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, Forbidden Door is at the end of this month, so that's still four weeks. Yeah. So away. usually, uh, Blood and Guts is what the very next week after Forbidden First Door. First week of July, I think. Usually. Yeah, yeah. So it should be the next week after that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, uh, we do get uh, the the thumbtacks in the foot. That one, yeah, I was like, like, there was some wicked yeah. spots. Yeah, like uh, chain wrestling. This is my thing. I I hate when tax are out, and then there's chain wrestling among the tax where you can clearly tell that the spot wasn't planned for this person to have to land in the tax. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And it's like I feel bad for them because like obviously they know what they're in for, but it's like that that spot was never planned to be in the middle of a bunch of tax. Yeah. The the tax either came out too early or they or they got spot. spread out all over the ring now and it's like too yeah. late. But um, we do get a uh, surprise Takeshita. Yeah, uh, Takeshita now joins the BCC. So does who is the elite going to be getting? Okay, so do you actually want me to tell you or why well, you know? Oh, well, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be Kota Ibushi and Okada. Okay. And they're going to add an extra person onto the other team. Because it seems like, I can't remember who it is, uh, honest to God, but, oh, it's going to be Shota. It's going to be Shota. Shota's going to yeah. join them on that team, and they're going to get, because now you've seen it. Okada yeah. has beef with Shota and beef yeah. with Claudio and, and Brian Mox. Danielson and Mox. 
And it's like, so this is like, you know, and then the secret spoiler one is going to be that, oh, it's going to be Coda comes out. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be six on six, uh, blood and guts. Okay. I'll take it. I'll I'll definitely take take it. Are you crazy? But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, this was one of the worst AEW shows I've ever watched. It's arguably been considered as the worst AEW pay-per-view that they've ever done. Yeah. And mind you, I did not like last year's Revolution. No, but this um, was much, much worse. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I It's still, it would be, it's hard for me to go like, oh, this is needs a terrible score because. This is not NWA. No, t- but there, there's a lot of redeemable things in this match. Okay. So what do you, what would you score it? I gave it a flat seven. Okay. I wanted to give it a flat seven too, but after talking about it now, I'm thinking of a six, nine. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay with a 6-9 because I think genuinely for the people who paid money to watch this and it sold crazy yeah. numbers of pay-per-view sales. Pay-per-view for, buys, yeah. It, it was like one of their highest selling ones. I think it's the highest selling uh, double or nothing that they've ever done. Okay. For pay-per-views. So from, for that reason, I can't recommend like watch it. It wasn't worth paying $50. No. But uh, it is what it is. Hopefully... um. Forbidden Door, we already got some matches announced for it. We got Danielson and Okada, and we got Osprey versus uh, Kenny Omega. We'll and talk about that on Thursday on our Dominion review and how smart. we got to those matches. But uh, those are already announced for Forbidden Door. I'm sure we're going to get in a few more. We're probably going to get FTR versus the winners of the tag matches. Just AEW, stick to what you do. Yeah, and stop trying to go to these specific places when it's just not working out. Look, you went to England, yeah. you're doing crazy sales. You you came to Canada, you're doing crazy sales. Stick to places where you're gonna sell out, and the crowd is gonna be there for you. Stop going to places where nobody cares about wrestling. Yeah, I think so. But uh, with that out of the way, guys, thanks again for joining us. Tune in tomorrow. We will have our review of NXT Battleground, and then on Thursday we will have our review of New Japan Dominion in. Osaka Joe Hall. So tune in this week for those and more reviews next week. There's going to be lots of reviews coming. So with that out of the way, thanks again for joining us. Goodbye and good night.